On the 18th of November, Skyroot Aerospace made the prarambh, the beginning for India's new age rocketry and launched India's first privately built rocket. A week later, on the 26th of November, Pixel and Dhruva hitched a ride to space on an ISRO PSLV, marking another first. The many firsts for Indian space tech startups in 2022 don't end there. Excited to take off soon, Agnikul has set up India's first private rocket launch pad and mission control. Where? In the backyard of ISRO, the mother of India's space program. 2022 will be remembered as the year Indian space tech startups found the escape velocity to take off. But the rocket boys will tell you it hasn't been an easy ride to the launch pad. In 2018, when we started off, there was no policy. And uh, you know, people said uh, we would never raise enough capital to build and launch rockets. But what it turned out to be, like you know, the capital became the first biggest bottleneck, and second bottleneck uh, happened to be policy, which was super smooth, I would say. In fact, the support from his store in space. Since the liberalisation of India's space economy in 2020, funding for Indian space tech startups went up by five times to over 100 billion dollars in 2022, according to the Indian Space Association. In fact, in September, Skyroot Aerospace closed the largest ever funding round for an Indian space tech startup when it backed $51 million in Series B, which was led by Singapore's sovereign fund, GIC. For Indian rocket startups like Skyroot or Agnikul, which raised $20 million in November and is preparing for its maiden launch in December, the opportunity is big. More than 20,000 smaller and sharper satellites are estimated to be launched in the coming decade. Each of them want a cheaper, smaller and faster ride-sharing option, an Uber or an Ola to space. It is our understanding that you know, it is going to exactly be like you know, the Ola, the Uber. So uh, even if somebody asks us, what is your uh, business model, it's just transportation business. Point A being ground and point B being space. So whether you call it as like an Ola, Uber or Agnikul or Skyroad, that's exactly how it is going to be. One of the potential clients could be Pixel, which is building a health monitor for Earth with hyperspectral imaging satellites. So far, the startup has sent three demo satellites, including one on Elon Musk's SpaceX rocket in April. Pixel is now gearing up to put a constellation of six satellites in Earth's lower orbit next year. The startup believes this could be an important milestone to show the space tech can be commercially viable. The next step is showing that there is a market for this, right? You can raise as much investment as you want, you can raise as many funding as you want. Um, but then if you don't have the customers paying for the imagery that you're getting, if you're not generating revenue, uh, then you can't build a sustainable business, which is uh, in the end what this is all about. So the total market size for Earth observation today in the world is about $5 billion on just the data sales and then an additional $10 billion on the analytics that you can layer on top of that, right? Um, and, and all of this is right now taken up by companies predominantly in North America and a few in Europe. The plan is that in the next five years, we become one of those players. Most of our contracts will end up being many multi-year, multi-million dollar contracts with the with subscription level um, data sets that we'll be able to provide them. Multi-billion dollars in revenue is not the only draw for Indian space tech startups. Globally, they're uniquely positioned in terms of the costs and technical know-how built over 60 years of ISRO-led low-cost but effective rocketry. The cost advantage could make Indian space tech startups profitable operators in one of the most expensive industries in the world. Space launch per se, you know, today it's around $10 billion market. It's set to grow to a $50 billion market soon. And then, uh, you know, with uh, us, you know, we want to uh, innovate uh, to a level where, uh, you know, we can reduce slash down the cost by, you know, 50%. It can be done. In fact, India has one big advantage. It is like by default, there is a good cost advantage. In fact, the kind of advantage we get in the IT sector, you know, similar, we also get uh, something in the high tech sector like space as well, you know. With over the next two years, India's space economy is set to hit $13 billion in market size. In comparison, the global space economy could rise to $600 billion in value. India's presence could be less than 3%. This cost advantage and liberalization of the space sector for private players could enable India to build space technology in India for the world. I only believe that you know we can address the whole uh, global market I think currently we stand at about 2-3% uh, to 3 of the global space economy and 
uh, with the privatization and the great push that ISRO in space and the current uh, regime has been giving, uh, we think we can easily uh, scale up that percentage to much higher numbers. Easy. After a monumental year with monumental launches, which put India's space tech startups on the global map, the comparison of these founders and their startups to Elon Musk and his SpaceX are inevitable. He's an inspiration, the founders admit, but affirm that India must build its own SpaceX. Akhil Vishwanath for CNBC TV 18.